Please watch the video in high quality. In this video, we will show how to save data to make it available in another scene. It will also show how to enable saving data in a game session so that it's available the next time the game is open after it's terminated. So for example, um, now the game is playing. If I change the color value to blue and then change this speed value to 5 and click on save data, the data will be saved. Now I could terminate the app or the game. When I play a game, the value of the color and the speed would be set to black and uh, the speed to zero. But once I do load data, you will see that the color and the speed has changed to the data we saved previously. To start, I will create two buttons using UI button text mesh pro and import the text mesh pro essentials once that's done uh, we'll rename the this button to save data button and we'll change its um, pivot to zero on the x one on the y and the um, anchor to top left and we'll change its X and Y position to zero and the width to 200, the height to 50. We'll just zoom to it so we could see it. There it is. And then um, we'll go to the text and we'll say save, change it to save data and we'll change the font size to 35. And then we'll make a copy of that button by pressing uh, Ctrl D and we'll just gonna push its position back to maybe uh, minus 75. And we'll change its text. Uh, first we'll change its name to load data button I'll delete this number and we'll change the text to load data okay so with that being done I'll under the assets I'll create a new folder for the scripts we'll call it scripts and inside that uh, script folder, we'll, call, we'll create two scripts files, C sharp. One we'll call it data manager, and the other we'll call it, oh, you could call it anything, um, we'll just call it set get data. Once these two files uh, are created, I need to assign them to two game objects. So one game object, I'll call it data manager. It's a new empty game object. And I will just assign the data manager script to it. And I click on it, make sure the data manager script is there. And the other Game, uh, game object. I'll create another game object for the other script. It's an empty game object. You can call it anything. I'll just call it um, save load data. And now if I, I'll just click and drag the script to that game object and make sure it's there. Now I'll double click on the data manager script to open it in Visual Studio. So inside the data manager I have a script, I have this code and I go uh, through it part by part to explain. So first I had to include or use the system.io namespace so that we could use it uh, for things like the file uh, class and its methods and then we'll have the uh, we'll, 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 we'll define here in this line 
will define instance of the class type that same class type uh, with its get and set methods and underneath I'll, we will define uh, variables that need to be stored so in this case I'll have a color a public color variable named color and a float variable named speed and then at the awake method uh, here uh, to in order to prevent multiple instances so we'll check if the if an instance it's there it's not null we destroy it and return otherwise the instance equal this and uh, we call the don't destroy on load game object and that is to prevent standard behavior that destroy all current scene object when loading a new scene and then we'll call the load data which read the data in the current scene this is a method that we define here and I'll go through it uh, soon the next part we will be use system dot serializable and this is an automatic process to transfer data into a format that unity can store and reconstruct um, then we will create a, a new class with variables that matching the variables that need to be stored here so they are the same variables with the, a, a new class which is called save data Then uh, we define a, 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 a data to, uh, sorry, we define a method uh, to write the data in which we have a, an object called data of the type save data class we have here. And we just, it's equal a new save data, new class, that's typical. Then the data object dot color would equal the color that we have here and the data dot speed will equal the speed variable we have in here and then we uh, define a variable of type string we called it json and we will use json utility uh, uh, dot to json and what that does it's a uh, change or, or, or uh, transfer the data we pass to it in this in this case it's the object here of type save data class to a, a string as to a to JSON format data and then we'll use uh, the class file dot write all text method and we'll pass that method will require the position uh, or the path where we saved it and we'll just save it under the application dot persistent data path which is default path available in unity and will uh, the, the path would include the file name which we chose to be save file dot json and we also this method will uh, ch choose the uh, uh, will pass it the string that we want to convert to json format which is would be this uh, uh, string uh, variable and here we just uh, in if you would like to know where that file would be located I'll just debug dot log it here so that we know where uh, where it is located in your system the next method load data it's just reverse what the write data does method does so it just read the data or load the data from a file so first it's require uh, uh, so we'll, we'll start by defining a string a name path and that's that path would be the apl application persistent data path which is its default uh, offered by unity and then the file name which we know it save file.json and then we'll check if that file exists if giving the path this one if it exists then what we do is we define a string we call it json similarly and we uh, assign the string to it using the file class dot read all the all text and pass the path to it and then we uh, get a, we define an object of type save data class over here and equal json uh, utility uh, in this case from json so convert from json to the data object 
uh, to to the to to, a to to the data here. So what it does is read the string as a JSON data structure, and assign the properties of class save data, which is the color and the speed, uh, to that object. Then we here we call the the variables that we assign we declared here. We just gonna assign their value using the data.color or data.speed. So it's just a reverse of what's happening here. So I'm going to save that. And next, we're going to go through the uh, other script. And the use of the other script is so the data manager is the script where you save a master script where you save a lot data. And this is just a text, uh, sorry, a test script. And through which we'll show you how to you could read and uh, sorry save and read or load the data. So I'll just double click it to open it. And this is just a simple test. Uh, so I, I have a two variables. You could make them anything. Uh, uh, you call them anything you want, but just because we have in the in the data manager we saving and loading color. So I have color value, name that color value, and the other one of type float, call it speed value. And we have two methods, and these methods I'm gonna link them to the buttons we have in the Unity soon. So uh, uh, the first method is save on a click. What it does, it's called. So when you do data manager is the script name here. Dot instance is the instance we uh, define here. And this will allow you access to uh, the variable or the, ob or the data over here. Dot color and dot speed. And these are the variables we here assign. And then we read and write. Uh, so first in here, the save on click, what it does, so I'm going to get the value of the variable here and assign it to data manager, don't extend the color. And similarly for the speed, assign it to the data manager, which is, uh, this is our master data, the data manager part. And then we'll do a, a write data, we call write data, which is the um, method over here that's write the data to a file. So let's say when we change the color, the color and speed values of these variables, then we could, after changing them, we could assign them to the, our master data and then write them to the file using this method. And then when, this is another method to load on a click, which also we can assign it to the, a button in the editor. And what it does, it's it's called the data manager load data, which is load the data from the file we saved here earlier or here. And then uh, it's load the data and then assign these values over here to uh, the values of our master data, which is get we can get them from data manager dot instant dot color, data manager dot instant dot speed. So data manager dot instance, it's your share for it's your share data that you could use through different scripts and save to the file and read from the file. So if I save the two scripts and then go to the editor, I just need to assign the two methods for save and loading the data to the two buttons we have. So this is one of the buttons and this is the other. So the save data buttons and we know that the scripts that contain these two methods, it's under set get data, which is part of the game object called save load data. So I'll select this button, save data uh, button and go to on click, click plus and then drag the save load data game object into none and then go to set get data script and then select the uh, on uh, uh, save on click. That's done. And then I'll select the other uh, button and click plus for on click and drag the game object that contain the set get data, which is save load data, drag it here and go to set get data script, which is here over here and select the method a which is called 
uh, load on click so now if I uh, click play I'll just uh, ch change to full HD resolution and then I could select the save load data because it has these scripts that has these color value and speed value uh, variables we had over here so I could just now uh, it, by default the color is black and the speed is zero so I change the color to blue and then we'll change the speed to seven and if I click I'll just turn on the console if I click save we'll see that our, our data has been saved in this file that's offered by default and so that's done so if I close the or stop the play or terminate the app or the game now click play again we will see that the color value and the speed value has been reset to default which is black and zero but when I click load the data it's supposed to load the data from the file we saved earlier so by when it that what it does so we'll see the color value has changed to blue and the speed value to seven so yeah that's that's about it this is how we could save data between scenes and sessions in unity or doing the data persistence it's also worth to mention that um, you can some some types of data cannot be saved using this method I'll put the link in the descriptions to just to show you examples of how you could save mesh to file at one time in unity for example and how could you read that mesh form file by converted it into text and reading it into uh, uh, and reading it from text but the essence of how to uh, manage the data in other words using the data manager dot instance would sp still be valid and working all the same so you'll still need to do this framework of data persistence in everywhere uh, whether you use this methodology or uh, another methodology the only difference it, you, it would be is that you won't be using the uh, um, this part here the system serializable which and that that's the issue here that's not all data types could be serial serializable and c comfortably or easily been transferred to JSON and read from JSON some complicated type of data cannot be done and in this case you will do the same over here but in this part you will just change them to string for example and write them to file and then read them from strings using, using your own defined methodology or method thank you Please like, subscribe and click the notifications button to help me make more videos like this.